Hello, my name is Ryan Hoverson, and today I'll be presenting the Waste Management Scandal. These were the officers that played a role in the scandal. Dean Buntrick, the founder, chairman of the board of the directors, and he was the CEO majority time of the scandal. Philip Rooney was a president, COO, director, and CEO for a short time of the scandal. James Koenig, executive vice president and CFO. Thomas Hall, Vice President, Corporate Controller and Chief Accounting Officer, Herbert Gertz, Senior Vice President, General Counsel and Secretary, and last, Bruce Tibetskin, Vice President of Finance. This is how each officer played a role in the scandal. Buntrick, the driving force behind the fraud. He set up earning targets, personally directed certain of the counting changes to make the target earnings was a person who announced the phony numbers. He made more than $16.9 million. Rooney, who was in charge of the building of the profitability of the company's core solid waste operations and at all times exercised overall control of the company's largest subsidiaries. He made sure that write-offs were not recorded and overruled accounting decisions that would have negative impact on operations. He made more than $9.2 million. Koenig, was responsible for the executing the scheme, was also an order for the destruction of damaging evidence, misled the company's audit committee, internal accountants, and withheld information from the outside auditors. He received more than $900,000 from his acts. Howe, was a principal technician for the fraudulent accounting. He devised many accounting manipulations to deliver the targeted earnings and carefully craft the deceptive disclosure. He gained more than 600000 from the scandal. Tibetskin, he was Koenig's right-hand man. He was an accounting expert and made $400,000. Getz, the company's general counsel, and received more than $450,000 from the scandal. So how did waste management create the scandal? They made fake financial statements between 1992 and 1997. The company's revenue was not growing fast enough to meet the target, so they instead resorted to improperly eliminating and deferring current period expenses to inflate earnings. They avoided depreciation expenses on their garbage trucks by assigning unsupported and inflated salvage values and extended their useful life. They failed to record expenses for decreases in the value of landfills that were filled with waste. They also improperly capitalized a variety of expenses and failed to establish sufficient liabilities to pay for income taxes and other expenses. Each year, Buntrick and Rooney prepared an annual budget in which they set earning targets for the upcoming year. During each year, they monitored the company's actual operating results and compared them to the quarterly targets they set. To reduce expenses and inflate earnings, they would use top-level adjustments to conform the company's actual results to the predetermined earning targets according to the compliant. To sustain the scheme, earnings fraudulently achieved in one period had to be replaced in the next. So how did Waste Management hide the scheme? They made false and misleading statements about the company's accounting practices, financial condition, and future prospects in filing with the commission. They used accounting manipulation known as netting and geography to make reported results appear better than they actually were. They used netting to eliminate $490 million in current period operating expenses and accumulated prior period accounting misstatements by offsetting them against unrelated one-time gains from the sale of assets. Using geography entries to move tens of millions of dollars to various line items on the company's income statement to make the financials look the way they want to show them. Arthur Anderson was their auditor for their books. They repeatedly issued unqualified auto reports on the company's materially false and misleading annual financial statements. Anderson identified the company's improper accounting practices and quantified much of the impact of those practices on the company's financial statements. Anderson presented a company of management with what was called proposed adjusting journal entries to correct errors that understood expenses and overstated earnings in the company's financial statements. Waste management entered an agreement with Anderson to write off the accumulated errors over 10 years and to change the underlying accounting practices in future years. The Fall Waste Management. Here's a quote from Associate Director of the SEC. He said, our compliance describes one of the most rigorous accounting frauds we have seen for years. These defendants cook the books, enrich themselves, 
preserved their jobs, and duped unsuspecting shareholders. In 1997, a new CEO ordered for a review of the company's accounting practices, and which led to the reinstatement of the company's financial statements for 1992 and 1997. When they reinstated financial statements in 1998, they found out $1.7 billion misstated pre-tax earnings. With that result, the shareholders lost more than $6 billion in their market value, and their stock price plummeted by 33%.